Okay, now that we've gone over the similarities between each of the bones in the different regions, let's look at some of the, the distinguishing features that, that make them different. So if we look at the cervical vertebrae, we're going to see that the body is relatively small, but what we also notice, because if this is not standing next to here, that may be somewhat difficult to remember, but what you'll definitely see is that there's a bifurcation that takes place here when we look at the spinous process. We really only see that in the cervical vertebrae. In addition to that, what I'm going to pass the pipe cleaner through on this side and also on this side are the transverse foramen. So this is where blood supply is basically going to come up through the neck and feed into the brain. If you see these transverse foramen on either side of the transverse processes, you know you're looking at a cervical vertebrae. If we look at the thoracic vertebrae, this one always reminded me of a giraffe. Right? You've got the ears, the long face, the horns on top, okay? It looks like a giraffe. I always remember the long neck of the giraffe is like the long face of the thoracic region. This is also where we have the most bones. We've got 12, we've got 12 thoracic bones, okay? You'll also notice if I held it like this and my finger like this, there are going to be certain areas where the rib cage is going to articulate here. So we only see the ribs touching on these thoracic vertebrae. If we look at the lumbar vertebrae, this is absolutely massive, okay, especially when you compare it to the others. The body is much, much larger. The spinous process has this hatchet shape to it. And you'll also notice the superior articular processes and the inferior articular processes are not facing anterior, posterior, like we saw in the thoracic region. Here, they tend to face medial and lateral.